got the best for last. Yeah, we, we got everybody from, from Raising Canaan. Then, yep. man. We the had, best for last. Had to hit the boy Joey up. It's been tough getting him, man. Yeah. Guy's busy, man. Hey, listen, all I know is my man Malcolm Mays made one phone call and here I am. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. We needed, we needed to get that Malcolm Mays episode. <laughs> Buys breakfast. Buys breakfast. Day one, day one. All right, Mike. I mean, this man needs no introduction. Yeah, man, this is a legend, man. Like for a long, long time, nigga been legendary since he was young, young too. But we got the boy, the Bodman, Joey Badass oh, in the man. building. Yes, Appreciate sir. Appreciate you pulling up on this, man. love, man. It's Joey. a pleasure to be here. Badass pleasure. Thank yes, you for sir. pulling up on the boys. So, yeah, dude. Honestly, like, I know a lot about you from growing up. You know, music, this and that. Mike obviously does, too. But, like, we wanted to get the full Joey Badass story. Like, where it all started. Music, acting. Like, what, what was day one of, like, I want to pursue music and and then into the success. What was that like? Well, you know, music was something that was always just a part of my being. Like, I remember from a very young age, my first, like, real serious musical, sentimental connection was to B.I.G. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I was two years old, I used to run onto the TV anytime a Biggie video came on, whether it was Juicy or Hypnotized, you know, and it's like... <laughs> I was hypnotized, <laughs> you feel me, like, from a young age. And, you know, my moms and my pops, they was big, like, you know, music listeners in general, but definitely hip-hop. I was from Brooklyn, you know, so I resonated with Big and Jay-Z. And, you know, when I was younger, when I was first introduced to poetry, that's kind of where it all started. I recognized that as that thing that these people that I looked up to did. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, this is what Biggie and Jay-Z be doing. I remember when I was in, uh, I was in first grade when I first got introduced to poetry, and that's exactly how I identified it. I'm like, oh, this is what Biggie be doing. You know what I'm saying? And from there, I would write poems like raps, you know what I mean, from the moment I was younger. You know, fast forward in the time, you know, like music was always a love of mine, but when it came to going to high school in New York City, you know, you got to kind of like apply for these different schools and take like specialized tests. So at that point in my life, I was like, okay, what it is that I really want to do? It was always music, but back then, there was no, like, really specialized programs that was going to cater to the type of music I was doing. Everything was more instrument-based and stuff like that. It was nothing for rap or, you know what I'm saying, pursuing a, 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 yeah, you know what I mean? So I turned to the next best thing, which was performance arts. Because, you know, I was always a big Tupac fan, Will Smith fan. So, you know, they, they always made me feel like I could do both. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, you know what? Let me let me uh, turn my focus to, like, theater. And, you know, I got accepted into the school called Edward R. Murrow. Shout out to Murrow in Brooklyn, New York. And I got accepted into the theater program. So, you know, I got, like, some of that information over the next two years and I got kicked out like in my junior year because <laughs> yeah, my attendance was just trash. Uh, and in the theater program, they want you to do like musicals and shit. And I wasn't with the with all that. I right. just wanted to act. I wasn't trying to do the ballet. I was the same way, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm trying to do real shit. Yeah, I'm like I was not trying to do all that shit. So you know, I just kind of started slacking. And at the same time. You know, I met a lot of my rap crew, Pro Era, in high school. So we just clicked up and we just started going hard in the music. And I kind of put the acting thing on the back burner because I figured if I took off in music, like I knew that I would because I knew that I had talent, I'm like, yo, I could use this. I could use that as, as leverage segue. in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that way people would actually want to use me because I'm bringing something to the table just off of who I was. But once they use me, they could see that I actually could do this shit, sure. you know. And here I am. And that's sure. tough though, cause uh, like I feel like a, a lot of people wouldn't even they wouldn't really know that you kind of was 
doing the acting before, like the music right. a little bit or some shit. Like, right, right. That's tough. That's yeah, at, at least before, like in a big way, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But music was always, always there, like, the first love, you know what I'm saying? But, that's what I call music. You know, now too. now I kind of got a side chick. <laughs> <laughs> and they both, they both yeah. working out pretty well. And they both well. fire. They, they both fire. fire. They both fire. She be giving me game for this one. Yeah. <laughs> and that one give me game for that you one. You can use them. You can use them, you feel me? They both beneficial. That's tough. That's hilarious. So, so when did you first start seeing success with music? Like, how young were you? I was 17 years old Man, when I dropped my first mixtape, 1999, and that became like a cultural classic. You know what I'm saying? It was like a soundtrack to a lot of people's teenage years growing up in New York City. And honestly, you know, I was just rapping with my friends. Like, we were just on some coming to school every day trying to have the best verse. You know what I'm saying? But I had some great company, you know, rest in peace and my brother Capital Steve. Rest in peace, Steve. You know what I'm saying? Man. CJ Fly and, you know, all, all, all of the homies back then, you feel me? Like, But to us, it was just about trying to outdo each other. You know, we were just doing the best that we could. And, like, you know, if people took notice, so be it. So when that started happening, you know, I don't think I was ready for a lot of that. Like, it took me a minute to get adjusted to the fame or to even actually get into the mindset of wanting to be a celebrity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It happened fast, man. Right. It happened <laughs> so fast. But, you know, I think I think it happened the way that it was supposed to because I feel like it, it, had I been ready or had that been my focus, I would have maybe burnt myself out yeah. early. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't on that heavy, I feel like now in the present day, I get to be who I am now. You know what I'm saying? It's like, now I'm here. Like, okay, now I'm ready to have my face everywhere. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Back then, I, I was like, now. I don't know. I think I kind of still want to walk down the block in New York. Yeah. You know what That's I mean? That's how I feel as well. Yeah, like, bro, you I feel me? Like, chill, bro. I still want to have, like, a normal, an aspect of a normal life. So, like, I had a lot of hesitation back then. And, you know, I would do self-sabotage and shit, like... Not showing up to places I had to show up or showing up 40 deep and not being able to get in. Yeah, like 30 you know what I'm saying? Late. And I'll be like, fuck it. If y'all ain't going to let, let us in. If y'all not let my man's in, I'm not coming I'm in. It's quiet. <laughs> the whole me? gang got to pull up. Or I'm so not like, you know, I burnt a lot of bridges and just missed out on a lot of opportunities really early on or whatever for just being like, you know, not ready. Mm -hmm. So like what's not some ready. like advice like growing up or like lessons that you learned like now? That you wish you would have got like when you was coming up. Man, you know? lesson number one: put yourself first. Mm -hmm. You know, like if I'm still I could go back, that. word I'm still up, it's a that, real bro. thing. You know, if I could go back in time, I would, that's what I would tell my adolescent self: is you know, put yourself first because people uh, take advantage of your kindness. For sure, you know take what I'm saying? They would take advantage of the people who got big hearts in this thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like you mean well, and you went, you know, for us especially too, like. Coming from underprivileged communities and things like that in. is a lot of pressure on you once you make it out to help everybody else behind you. There's a tax. And, and what yeah. the yeah, and what the people behind you don't understand is the more you helping them out, the less you can actually help yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They exactly. see you get to somewhere and they're like, help me, help right. me. But it's like, you know, you gotta look at it like this. It's like Aladdin's purple carpet. You know what I'm saying? The more weight I got on this motherfucker. The, the, the harder it is for, you know, for me to float. To fly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the least, I, the least distance I could travel. Right. The least distance I could cover. Like I could, I could float just above the motherfucking ground and, and still be <laughs> fly. But it's like that's not where I need to get to. I need to touch the sky. You feel me? So I had to learn that over time. I had to, you know, unfortunately, cut some people out of my life. You feel me? So I could focus on me. And once I started doing that, my life changed drastically. Like, nigga, skin clear. You know what I'm saying? I'm the most handsome I've ever been in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it just it feels great. Yeah. A lot yeah, of great definitely. things happen there. Yeah. When, when's the first time you felt, like, not not fame or success, but, like, the first time you were like, oh, my God, like, did you ever have that oh, shit moment? Or did it yes. was gradual? So back in, what was that, 2014, 2015, like the first week of January, so it was it was crazy. It was like these two crazy events that happened. So first off, I got arrested in Australia because the security guard tried to like, like I was basically running on stage because my set was starting, but like I had to take a piss. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was taking a piss in the woods and then my DJ started playing my song. I didn't even get to really leak it out, bro. Like, I pulled down and then he started playing the song. So I zip myself back up and I run on the stage. And I guess the security guard thought I was just like some, some random, random fan. So 
So as I'm running, I'm about to like turn on the stage. I just get clothesline oh. from behind. <laughs> so it was like, imagine me, like, who the fuck just assaulted me? Yeah, like, now we got So get I just it. got up, I turned around, I saw the security guard, I didn't even think. Boom! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he had the noodle legs, he fell to the <laughs> ground, and I just went on stage and I did my show. They let me do my whole show. As soon as I got off the stage, they yeah, arrested me. Yeah. I spent the night in jail in Australia. And, and and that has some more interesting stories, but I'll say that for another day. <laughs> you know, long story short, as I, as I got bailed out the next morning, as soon as I got in, like, my tour van, I checked my Instagram, and there was this photo going viral of Malaya Obama in one of my Pro Era merch shirts. Oh, shit. So it was like... A super that negative was, moment right, to a super positive, positive moment. Right. And that shit was everywhere. Like, I was on every news channel in America because they was making a big deal that one of the Obama daughters was supporting a rap group right. who talk about, you know, fucking right. overthrowing yeah. the system and the yeah. government and shit like yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that was the first moment where I was like, whoa. That's different, though. When you like, really think about it, I was everywhere. It, when you, you know think about saying? that, though, when they Obama listen to that. I ain't going to lie. After <laughs> that tough. shit... I'm not going to lie. I swear, I felt like the Secret Service started tapping my phone. <laughs> Wait, like, it get it, like that, though. It get like that. Cause, it get like that. I mean, I don't blame them. Like, how right. the fuck she got my shirt? Right. Like they probably like, yo, is this nigga... Is, is he sniping? That <laughs> like, like they, they had to find out. And yeah. I feel like they was right. investigating. Right. Like, I, yo, at the time I was living in Brooklyn, I was in this brownstone, and I had this tree that covered my property. Mm -hmm. Like, you couldn't see my property because the tree was there. After that shit happened, the tree just magically disappeared. I'm like, fast taking pictures. Nah, <laughs> these niggas exactly taking pictures, bro. Hell, nah. Hell Damn, nah. Like That's... how the tree just gone all of a sudden. The shit that shaded my crib so perfectly. Yeah, now it's like my crib was just out in the open. I had to get up out of there, bro. Listen, hold on, Nick. She got his shirt. <laughs> yeah. We got to see if she's going in there. Cut the tree. That's it. Exactly. Cut the That's fucking it. tree. <laughs> I swear, bro. I don't know. I was paranoid in that time. Yeah. Now, I get like that too, though, because I this might have to be off the record, but... I was for me, I was, you know, for me texting Sasha Obama for a little bit, right? And Lala. You were? Yeah, and Lala knew, Dude, right? So cool. So she's like, she's like, nigga, you about to have people watching you. And I thought she was joking. Like, I felt like she was joking, but I feel like she wasn't joking, bro. <laughs> you feel me? Like, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, she's just saying it because, like, you feel me? That's, you know, one of the Obama, you feel me? Like, just be careful, like, tread lightly or whatever. Right. But. I don't know. These motherfuckers probably watching this nigga. Now after that. <laughs> they're watching the crew has it. what they're watching. <laughs> Listen, bro. I'd rather overthink than underthink. Yeah, yeah. That's a fact. That's <laughs> like, a yeah. fact. Yeah. Period. When, when you were touring, who was the first person you met that like blew your fucking mind? Ooh, that's a great question. Hmm. Like on tour? I don't know about on tour, but I remember meeting Jay-Z at 17. Oh, that's tough. Like, and just being like, wow, I can't believe I'm here right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then and then believe it or not, like another person who's who I got starstruck over was uh Chili and T Boss from TLC. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know Chili. I ain't, I don't I ain't know the What's yeah, T T Boz, Chili, I and, and know, Left Eye. I didn't know that was her name. I just, bro, I don't, I just know, know, I don't know why I met them, bro. And it's like I couldn't even say no words, yeah, bro. It'd be like that. Some people <laughs> like, you just like, like you don't yo. you can't find the words to say. You just like, damn, yeah, bro. They just I don't know. I, I think I just had that moment of like, wow, you guys are real people. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like And like about being starstruck. Like who was one person that you seen like that was rocking with your music? Like like one of the first people that you seen rocking with your music that really caught you, like, yo, there's no way he listened to me. Right? Taraji P. Henson. Uh, Early, she was on my shit. Early, from when I was like 17, 18. I'm like, how did this lady even find my nah, music? Nah, that's tough. And that's it was tough. a very specific song that like she had commented on or like she showed love to. And it was like a deep cut. To this day, it's not on streaming service. Where? So I'm like, how the fuck? Like, nah, she was looking for that then. She, like, somebody put her on and she was yeah. doing some searching or something. That's so tough. I always remember that. Like she was she was tapped in early. Shout out to Taraji. Now being 17 and having and then like knowing Taraji P. Henson is bumping your shit is right? crazy. You especially like especially the music that you're making at the time. You're like, Taraji, listen to shit like this. Right. Like, I'm like, Event? Yeah, that's crazy. That's so so you, you dipped out of school at, at what, 16? And you did you started touring when you were 17? seventeen? Seventeen, yeah. when I was seventeen. So yeah. were everyone that you went to high school with when you were touring? Like what the fuck? Like when you started going to all the festivals? Yeah. And... So my first tour was like such a toxic tour <laughs> for a seventeen year old. Like for a kid out of high school, like they put me on tour with Juicy J. Yeah. 
<laughs> like, do you know what that tour did to me? <laughs> like, it made me a savage, bro. Yeah. It made me a savage. Nah, it's like, every night, J. Every night the last song he's playing is bands that make a dance. Yep. Band, like, just imagine. And it's just going just, up. Just Everybody imagine, just bro. Up. Every city was yeah. just, wow, bro. Yeah. Like, And my adolescent mind, like, I just couldn't take all that. <laughs> right. It was a lot. Came home a different man. <laughs> Right. I, I left the boy. I came back came a man. Back yeah. Yo, hell yeah. yeah. Juicy J on, on tour, bro. That's tough. Yeah. Probably had him in his strip club. Yeah, bro. Bro, in strip club it, it was no environment for a fucking graduating junior <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> going to senior. It was no environment for So that. when did you start noticing like oh like like the fame not really changing you, but like the people around you, like like the they behavior, like like how like how did how did that like kind of oh, affect immediately. you? Immediately. Right mm -hmm. away, before I even got signed for real, just, you know, when the word got out around my school that, so my first manager and the guy who put me on, his name is Johnny Shipes. Johnny so when the, and at the time, you know, he, so he he discovered Nipsey Hussle, Big Crit, Smoke Dizzle, and at the time, that's who he was working with. So when the word got out that that dude was interested in me, that's when I started seeing people change from from mm. then. I, I didn't even get the deal yet, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But, like, motherfuckers are changing in a way where they they almost wanted to box me out, you know what I'm saying? It was like, oh, shit, like, that's the plug. And if he into him, shit, he'll be into me, too. Because, you know, motherfuckers are like, I'm better than him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, like, motherfuckers are trying to, like, skip me. Try to get you, you out know, of here. Yeah, you know, was, shit, I man. saw a lot of that early, but, you know, I played it. I played it very well. I played it very well because I'm still here. Hell yeah! So Mike, do you know what time it is, baby? You know it is a manscaped summer. Duh, so, on. ladies, actually, you know, I was gonna say stop listening, but if you want to gift your man something to keep his ball nice and smooth, get him. Manscaped. Yeah, okay? listen, it doesn't take much to, you know, to satisfy a man. Right. You know, doesn't. all we need is manscaped. A little and head a massage, little, yeah. a little cuddle, a little manscape. And okay? some support, you know? Yeah. Just some support. And keep the toes white, but that's a personal. Thing. I like French tip personally, but you know, do what you do. No, do do French tip. Listen, all that to the side, it's time to tame your man. So say goodbye to your stubble trouble with Manscaped's Beard Hedger Pro Kit. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit comes with a cordless trimmer that has 20 different hair cutting lens, all in one blade. Come on now. One guard. Plus, it's waterproof. So you could shave in the shower, in the pool, in the hot tub. You can avoid all that mess and just let it go down the drain. Why are you shaving in the pool, though? You never know. You know. We got the titanium coated T blade that's tough on your hair, but soft on the skin, though. Keep it smooth. And it brings satisfaction one stroke at a time, unlike me. Listen, we got the beard, shampoo, and conditioner. Come on. Shampoo and conditioner for your beard? And it's specifically designed to moisturize, reduce ingrown hairs, replace natural oils, and promote that beard health, baby. The kit also includes some beard oil, which makes that beard nice and moisturizing. Listen, if I could grow a beard, I would use this product. But listen, I can't, so let's throw it on over to Michael. I mean, you know, it's coming. I think. I don't know. We'll see. But if it does... I'm definitely using Manscaped. Beard has a pro. Come on now. So get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the promo code CREW. We're helping you out, baby. 20% off, free shipping. You know I hate paying for shipping, so we're going to give you all that. Free shipping, 20% off. Use the code CREW. Come on now. Back to the episode. So when did when did the um, the Canaan stuff happen? Like, <clears throat> what what was the... The early talks of that, did you pursue power first or did they come, did you like your agents tell you there was a... So a, I remember 2019, um, I think, because uh, the original power went up to six seasons, right? Yeah, six, yeah. Yeah, I think season six had just ended mm -hmm. not too long ago, like 2019 -ish. Yeah, 2019, that's right? when it ended up, yeah. And I remember, at the, I remember at the end of that year, December... I had like, you know, and I do this every year. Like at the end of the year, I make like a list of my goals for the next year, like what I want to accomplish. So I remember at the end of 2019, I was doing this for 2020. And one of my goals was to land the role, right? 
I didn't know what exactly that meant, but I knew the kind of role it was because I was just watching Power, I was just watching Top Boy, you know what I'm saying? And and don't get me wrong, like I stayed away from a lot of these roles in the beginning. You know what I mean? I didn't want to be a drug dealer, I didn't want to be a rapper, I didn't want to be anything that was too close to my environment because right. I wanted to show people that I could really You could act. go different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why my first role was on Mr. Robot and yeah. it was just some next type of character. Yeah. You know what I mean? But... <laughs> In 2019, at the end, when I was writing my goals for 2020, I'm like, you know what? I, f I finally feel ready for this role. I feel like I've showed people my range enough now, and now I can step into a role like this comfortably and not feel like people are going to only think that I could do this. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I wrote the goal down, land the role, the role, and, um, you know, in my mind, it was, it was like a role, like, unique. And literally, next month, the email came through about this character for the new spinoff for Kanan. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I just got finished watching uh, uh, wow. season six. And I remember <laughs> when they previewed it at the end, mm -hmm. book two, book three. I'm like, right. oh, shit, the fuck is that about? So when I saw the Kanan joint come through, I'm like, oh, nah, this is mine. Yeah. I'm on this. <laughs> I'm on this. And it's like, he had I could feel it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I had that feeling. And I saw it. I read it. I'm like, nah, this is me. And I kid you not, <laughs> this is. The, uh, don't say this the wrong way, but the day that I went to audition, and my man's could vouch for me too, right? Because he drove me there. I didn't start studying these lines until I was about to walk upstairs. <laughs> now, I'm that not, I'm, I'm like, not going to lie to you. Like, like that <laughs> I did not study. Because I ain't going to lie. I'm the type of person where I'm very, I'm the type of actor I'm very instinctual. Mm -hmm. Everything is instinct, and I like to be as close to my natural reaction as possible. So a lot of the time, I will wait to the very last minute to take it in mm -hmm. because I want it to be as, as natural, natural as of a reaction. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to... that in, in that category of my life, I don't like to overthink. Right. Everywhere else, I Everywhere overthink, overthink the fuck right. out of yeah. something. But that, you know, when it comes to acting, I like to have it be as natural as possible. So I just read it when I was in the car downstairs, walked up, did it, and I remember Sasha fucking... Sasha just Penn. He was sitting there with the biggest smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like... Would you cut your hair? <laughs> That's the first thing he said after. Yeah, he was like, that was like, yeah, I cut my hair. He was like, all right, we'll be in touch. Yeah. And like a couple of days after that, you know. You got it, it immediately? No booked chemistry it. read, no anything? No chemistry read. Wow. Yeah. They, they was like, nah, this guy is shit. then, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I he heard wrote D-Roll. I heard there were so many rappers that read for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Dave East read for it. I know my homie Eric Ark. The architect read for it. Mm. I think my homie IDK said he read for it. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was a ton of yeah. it. was a few motherfuckers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's crazy. It was Joey shit, y'all. So it's only one unique, bitch. It was Joey shit, y'all. Yeah. Sorry, what, man. What was the audition like? Were you nervous or you were just... Nah, not even because at that point, you know, I had done Mr. Robot. Right. I had done Boomerang. I think I had done Wu-Tang already by then. Mm. Yeah, I did Wu-Tang already because I did Wu-Tang with my hair. It was just tucked under the bandana or whatever. So yeah, no, nah, I wasn't. I wasn't nervous at all. I was confident, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I was Some confident. Because like, you know like, like you said, you seen the role. You was like, oh yeah, now nah, this. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, I claimed it before yeah, I even yeah, yeah. came in there, bro. So I, I just you went had that in with that energy. In you know what I mean? They like do it. I'm like, nigga, got right into that motherfucker. Right. <laughs> I'm like you That's, feel me? So you read with Sasha? Sasha was the one that was reading with you, or was? Nah, uh, I think it was actually Rob. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Rob Shout actually. Shout out Rob, man. Rob, Rob, that nigga, man. Yeah, that's a fact. Rob is tough. That's my guy, man. Shout out to Rob. He directed the pilot of. Canon? Shout out Rob. He Hardy. did. Yeah. Yeah, nice. I think, yeah, I believe, yeah, he did the pilot and he usually does an episode 10 as well. Yeah, the last. He always, yeah. either, he does the first He's and the, the last. finisher. Yeah. 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 He's yeah. the finisher. Robbie yeah. coming, yo, Robbie gets straight to business too. Yeah, like, yep, we're gonna fact. do this. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah, 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 like yeah, 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 and he always got good energy. He always yeah. got a smile on his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm but saying? But he by like, his business, but he yeah. got but he gonna have he a smile. He never get stressed his... out though, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But like you still know that he's serious. Mm -hmm. You yeah. feel me? You don't play with him. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. You can't play with yeah. him. Yeah. Did did you work with uh Rami Malik on Mr. Robot? Oh yeah. How yeah. Was that? Rami is a good friend of mine. That was it was a great experience. So I right, That was your this. first role, right? That was my first role. So mm -hmm. that's what I was about to say. Like yeah. my first scene I've ever shot. Was alongside Rami Malik and Christian Slater. Damn, bro. That's so I go crazy. from like being a fucking Z list nobody <laughs> to <laughs> my first yeah. scene is with Rami Malik and Christian Slater. So it was like I automatically had to catch up. 
I had right. no choice. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If they sat in the bar here, I had to, had to at least there. be there. Right? You had to get up there. At least be there. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I was grateful for that opportunity because I feel like it really propelled me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When it came to the acting. Right. Damn. So so then you do Canaan. So you do you do the first season of Canaan and what like was it what you thought it was? Was it better? Um, like was did unexpected things happen? Like tell me that process of that first year of doing that. Because COVID happened like a month right. in, right? Right. So I was gonna get into that. So the funny thing is, you know, we started in twenty twenty February, I wanna say, and mm-hmm. then COVID popped off in March. So we shot Why like two episodes and it took an eight month hiatus. Oh. Yeah. So it was like, you know, just cut my hair for the first time, mm-hmm. jumping into this character, and then it was just like, stop. You like, what the fuck? I'm like, damn, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, here go this we damn, just damn like yeah. Right. You feel me? I'm like, are we even gonna be able to get back to this thing? I'm right. like, I finally got the dream role. Right. And now, now what? Now we, we now got a hulk, big like, ass hulk. Motherfuckers don't want me to be great now all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. But the interesting thing is. That allowed for another beautiful opportunity for me. So through the pandemic, you know, pandemic started off in March, April, May, you know, radio silent. We all in the crib adjusting. June comes around and then I get a call from my man, James Samuel. Shout out to James. He actually wrote and directed The Heart of Day Fall. Mm-hmm. I get a call from him and he tells me about a script that his homie Trayvon Free got called Two Distant Strangers. Yep which was the Netflix short that mm-hmm. I did. So he was like, yo, Joey, I think you're perfect for this role. And, you know, we could shoot it in this time. You know what I'm saying? We could go to L.A., shoot it. You know, I know that I had the exclusivity for Canaan or whatever, but we're in the pandemic now. Yeah, so it opened the opportunity for me to be able to shoot this thing. And then it was perfect because here's another, like, color of a character. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never played a role like that before either. And that ended up coming out before Kanan and then getting winning the Oscar. Yeah, that's what I was about that to say. Shit. That's the award winning joint. Right. Yeah, so it just yeah, played yeah. beautifully. That's hard. And then right after that joint <laughs> came out, two months after that, Kanan came out. Yeah. So yeah. it was just like boop, boop. Yeah. <laughs> you just, feel just me? Yeah. Up. It just uh, started uh, a snowball. A line and word up. Yeah. Snowball, like you said. Yeah, that's crazy. You don't, I mean, you just don't know what's going to hit. You're like, I, I fuck with this. Like, I like the script. I want to do it. And like, did you think it would have won an Oscar? No, bro. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, the the director was so sure from day one. Like he was on his manifestation shit heavy. Like yeah. in his crib, he had a post-it sticker for where he was gonna put the Oscar. Mm. He's like, Oscar goes here. From before we even started shooting that motherfucker, this motherfucker was loosely throwing around Oscar. Oh, and I'm like, yo. To do that and then. I'm to like, go I from- think this script is cool. But like, <laughs> hey, I don't you know, know about you know, that. I'm, like, like, I'm like, but look, if you like it, I love, I love it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. if you want to throw that shit around loosely, yeah, I ain't going to fucking rain on your parade. Fuck it. I want Oscar too, <laughs> goddammit. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't yeah, going to lie. I ain't never seen such powerful and clear. Manifestation yeah, done in front of my face yeah, like that. That's, that's like yeah. magic. Like the nigga. motherfucker <laughs> had to post it. Right. That's like in magic. the place. <laughs> yeah, now nah, that's different, bro. Like, like, <laughs> that's different because like I'm a nigga like I don't do shit like that because like I, I do some shit like that and then I don't reach the expectation. Be I'm gonna mad. be mad as shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be so mad, bro. Eat it. So that's a different type of like, yo, we we doing this. Yeah. We gonna get that Oscar. That's nah, that though. that's that whole experience did show me that like anything is fucking possible. For sure, anything. Is and possible. a lot of people who come in here have a, a lot. Like honestly, I'd say probably about ninety five to ninety seven percent of people that sit in that seat and tell us their story, how they got on power, how they got in music, all this stuff. They're all like, I just visualized it, like I manifested it. Like it should be real. It's though. all consistent. Facts. The same shit that people who are successful say the same stuff. Facts. Like manifestation is real, but you yeah. got to put your posi- yourself in a position to make sure that yeah. manifestation Word. comes to life. You know sure. what I'm saying? Word. Word. I, mean, people... I mean, the key about it too is like claiming it before it happens. Right. Mm-hmm. You got to be in that frequency right. so that thing could just align with you. Yes, you got to be there. You got to be yeah. there, right? Like when I walked up for Unique, I'm like, I was already there. Mm-hmm. I had already claimed that shit as yeah. soon as I got that email. Yeah. Yeah. Claimed that motherfucker. Yeah. So when I got there, shit just... Here. Nigga, like, would go. you cut your hair? <laughs> yes. <laughs> nigga, right, you're unique. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Especially for that bag, nigga. Yeah. What? Yeah. You yeah. want me to cut it myself? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it right now. Tonight. Uh-huh. I'll cut this shit in front of you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> right now with a clipper. Uh, yeah. you know, did, did you um did you ever come across 50 before 
uh, Canaan happened, or did you guys speak after? Or? No, that was the first time when I when I came to the initial table read. That was the first time I met Fifty, and the first thing he said to me was. You surprised me, nigga. You surprised me. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. That's so like, funny. You surprised me, that's nigga. The, that's the first thing he said. We ain't never had no words. <laughs> nigga just looked at me and said, you surprised me, nigga. <laughs> I was like, that okay. is so 50 of him, I'll bro. take it. You yeah. surprised me, nigga. Yeah. And you, so you did the table read at Steiner, but you guys shoot at um at Silver Cup, right? No, we actually did the table read somewhere in the city. On one of them tall buildings out there. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember yeah, exactly where. Yeah, man, I miss them table reads. These Zoom table reads be getting me mad, bro. Yeah. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. I be chilling in the crib. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's though, when they, when they used to set up the table reads, bro... It's like a family reunion. Nah, nah you right. You, you feel right, me? Like though, you, you see, because right, you you don't right. have scenes with everybody in the show. Yeah, that's so a that's fact. everybody's there. Then that's they got the fact. big food set up. They got seafood, mm -hmm, crab mm -hmm. legs, all type. It of was stuff. an event for sure. Yeah, it that shit was lit. I'm like, COVID just that. made me way too comfortable with being in the house. Like, yeah. Hell yeah, hell yeah. yeah. So I'd be like, oh, you mean I don't got to travel for this meeting? Yeah. Amazing. I was fucking with that though. <laughs> like the meetings and shit. I'm like, all right, babe, we could talk. Phone, yeah. Zoom, hey, we Gucci. I don't yeah. gotta wake up. I don't gotta make sure I get here at a certain time. We, I bet. Yeah. When COVID happened, did you were you worried about am I gonna be able to tour again? Like, was that? Oh yeah, of, yeah, for sure. Like, bro, I remember when it was like you know, I was doing virtual shows through the pandemic. That was the weirdest shit ever. Yeah. Wait, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 how I, would they I, set it up? Like, so the way I was doing it is I would rent like a small venue, like SOBs. Mm -hmm. I would rent it out for the night, and I would just you know set my cameras up something like this. And I would just perform on stage by myself. Right. But it was weird, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, being did, on like, stage and there's, and no, there's no physical crowd, right? audience. But I know these motherfuckers is watching there's me through these cameras. Was right. on the, on the drums, it was, bro, like, I really... Damn, that's crazy. Motherfuckers really got paid for virtual shows. Yeah. Like, you know how wild that is? Yeah. How long How long was it until you did your first show after the pandemic? Um, I want to say... My last tour before the pandemic was like was 2018, so and then I I, I want to say my first show back physical was like 2022, 20, so it was like a four year oh, gap. Man. I ain't gonna lie, I was afraid. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. do these motherfuckers even know me anymore? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they yeah, going, nah, did they forget that. the music? Yeah, like, am I gonna remember how to perform? What do I do? Yeah. What do I do? It's been so long. Like, like, I had nah, stage fright all over. Four years, four years is yeah. crazy though. Yeah. I felt so weird getting up there. Like, it felt like why? the first time. Yeah, I'm like, why all these people looking at me like that? Like, I'm performing. Oh, oh, it's me. Yeah, that shit made me. Pandemic turned me into an introvert. Now yeah. I'm like, God, what the fuck? Yeah, bro. You know, that so I had to like get back into that vibe and right. shit. You know. What do I'm you like performing live or do you like acting more? Like, what's what's like a, what do you like doing more? Um, I like both. I think that they they both kind of give me this similar element. Like when I'm delivering in both those spaces, I feel like it's it's coming from the same like space, intuitively, spiritually. You know what I mean? It's like that thing that I'm able to fall into the trance and get lost or get fully submerged in you whatever like, it is I'm doing. Do. Right, you like, just... when I'm performing and I'm on stage, like, I'm literally on autopilot, but in the best way. Right. Like, I'll be rapping, and it's like, I'm the type of rapper that's like, I, I, I rap over instrumentals. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying every word. Right. I'll be saying 2,000 words a minute, and still having thoughts on the stage, like, oh, that girl right there, cute. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta like, observe the damn, crowd. Damn, like, I, I hope somebody got something rolled up when I come on the stage. Then, like, I'm right. thinking all this shit while I'm delivering lyrics. <laughs> right. And you know what I'm saying? And that's when I'm really, like, lost and I'm submerged. And it's like, you know, I feel free. Motherfuckers start dancing up there. And I feel like the same thing happens when I'm acting. You know what I'm saying? It's like, when I really... Like y'all know what it's like you when, you, when, when you first two takes out the way, yeah, you and then you get me, the third and, and fourth. You like hold on, there. Now we getting somewhere. And you tap mm -hmm. in, you know what I'm saying? And it's you like really... you don't even want to cut. You're like hold on, reset, yeah, don't cut, reset, don't, don't yeah. cut. Yeah. Come on, let's go again. You know what I'm saying? I need to stay here. I need to stay yeah, here right exactly. now. I got the energy. I need to I'm stay here. In that pocket, that yeah, that bro, it's the best. It's funny because I watch like like especially with with Ghost and shit or just all the power universes is like. I can tell when motherfuckers is tapped in. in. Yeah. I can tell, can like, tell. but like on the, on the, the last face. season, like seeing y'all, I'm like, oh yeah, he was like, <laughs> you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, eyes, like, like he was really mad. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah, what I'm saying? Like it came shit. from a real place. Yeah, yeah bro. And I, I love seeing that. Those you know, the best what I mean? moments yeah. translate right. perfectly. Yeah. A little different over there, buddy. Your hair's looking a little shiny. Got some volume to it. Listen, I know you're all thinking, okay, it's the do rag from the the baby video, but guess what? It's not. It's Storm, baby. 
It's Storm from Plant Made. I mean, look, you've been using the, you know, the Storm. I've been using the drizzle. You know what I'm saying? I've been using the drizzle. It keeps me hydrated, moisturizing, you know, keeps the hair soft. I'm about to go to throw back, like I said. So, you know, let's get it spicy up here. Let's get it spicy. It's getting me right. So for every time we work with a new partner, I do a little research first. And I went to the Plant Made website. I didn't see a bad review. Okay, people love Plant Made. They got genderless and ageless products for all hair types, long, short, thick, thin, whatever it is. And dudes too. Yeah, dudes, whatever, dudes. Wow. Look at look at I absolutely love the way that it makes my hair feel. I feel fresh. Feel when natural. I get, right, Nothing it feels good. Like it's like too much weird stuff in your hair. Bro, after a long day on set, nine, 10 hour work day, I got all this hair product in my hair from these people fixing it, whatever. I get in my dressing room, I take a shower, I get out and I use a plant made and I feel like a new person. Listen, they're a trusted company. Everything is handmade, vegan, and most of all, it's black woman owned. Now listen. This is for the listeners or the crew only. If you don't listen to the crew, this ain't for you. Get 15% off your online order by using the code CREW at weareplantme.com. Again, this is not for anyone that doesn't listen to the Crew Has It podcast or isn't Coyle Ray, okay? The Crew Has It. Listeners are getting a very special deal here for Plant Me. Listen, there's no minimum spend required. It's not the club. They're not trying to hit you with the minimum tax. Yeah. We're not doing that. This isn't Starlets, okay? Yeah, but listen, do what you want. Go ball out. Buy the whole site. I, I encourage you to get the whole site. Everything on it is fire. It's going to have you feeling good, smelling good, looking good, all that. So go ball out. But you don't got to spend no minimum. But go ball out. Again, go to weareplantmade.com. Use the promo code CREW for 15% off your first order. Now... You know, now that we got your hair feeling all nice and silky, you could watch the episode while you, you know, rubbing. Oh, shit. <laughs> while you rubbing the hair, you know what I'm saying? It's looking shiny. So, yeah, back to the episode. See you soon. Do people see you out in public and yell unique now? or Absolutely. Because it happened to Mary. Yeah, <laughs> people call Mary Monet now. Monet. Yo, I was, just yeah. talk, I was just talking about that. I'm like, bro, like... At first, I'm like, yo, why are you calling me Tariq? Bro? I'm like, bro, like, yo, bro, like, come on, bro. And then, like, you know, Ghost comes out. Season one comes out. Everybody's going crazy. And then people call him Mary Monet. I'm like, nah, I can't even be mad Man. at this shit. No more. Like, this Mary J. Blige. And people seeing her and saying, Monet, Monet. I'm like, fuck it, I'm Tariq. Y'all call me Tariq all y'all want. It's whatever. If y'all change the Mary name, then fuck it, I can't be mad at shit. Yeah, can't be yeah, bad. Nah, they changing my name out there for sure. Yeah, I be at dinners and shit, just chilling, minding my business. And motherfucker be like, "You me? <laughs> Why you fucking like, with Rock?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 he like, "Yo, yo, Rock violated." <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, my man, it's a TV show. Yeah. <laughs> you filmed that last year. Yeah, like, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. Like, <laughs> niggas is still in it. Like, that. he just watched it last night. Yeah, like, bro, I forgot about this. It'd be shit. crazy though, cause the like. Man, I got to say, like, it's a beautiful thing with 50 created, bro. Because it's like, we have a show, like, we have shows that people are really so invested in. Passionate, bro. For sure. Passionate, Passionate, shit. Passionate. (laughs) To the point, like, they see us out and they got to call us by the calendar. Yeah, they have to. And it's it's really crazy because that really be their first instinct. Like, it's not even like they going out their way to call it. Yo, like, they they see me, treat, like. (laughs) <laughs> that should be wild. Bro. It's kind of wild because, like, sometimes we'll be out and people will be like yelling at us. We're kind of like, Ugh. and then you think for a second, you're like, you could be on like a CSI or like a show where no one gives a fuck, <laughs> right? So it's like right. we kind of have it made where people. Right. We don't gotta think is is a show coming back for next season? We know it is. Yeah, for we sure. don't gotta. We yeah, don't. Got, people like, want to watch, <laughs> right? Pe- people are tuned in, so it's like there's a give and a take with everything. So it's like we'll give that piece of us for us to know that you know everyone loves the show yeah. and they're invested. You know, it's it's a little trade. Yeah, it's a little trade. What's yeah. better than that? That's a fact. Yeah, that's, that's a fact. fact. Right? Shout out to all the fans showing support, all the love. Y'all be bugging sometimes. That's a but fact. It's all good though. Yeah. We appreciate y'all either way. You know. What I'm Shout out to the creators though, of the Power Universe. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. 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 Courtney, Fifty, y'all just shit with that. Mark yeah. Kane, we love you guys. You, you obviously Sasha. had conversations with Courtney and stuff like that, right? Uh, oh yeah, 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 for sure. Like prior to you know, yeah. coming on, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shout out to Courtney. Yeah, she's, she's great. lovely. She the best. Best. The best. Who, who do you like work with the most on that set? Because Mike and I pulled up uh, your last day um, of uh, the finale last year, yeah. and we pulled up. Um, we saw everyone, but um, I don't. You just weren't working that day. But who do you oh, like? Yeah, who do you like ones. working with? Uh, like as far as the actors, yeah, or? the actors are like who's oh. like your favorite scene partner? Yeah, Patina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, she's, yeah. Both. she's tough. She's just next level, you know. Yeah. Like she's one of those people. Like 
it's like 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 the Rami Malik Christian Slater days. Like she's one of those people who's going to bring you up. Yeah, you know like, what I'm saying? Yeah. She's going to elevate you. Like Man, you're gonna have please. to be great or better. Right, <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Working with her. So I love she, working with actors like that where you like yeah. they gonna force you to get in that pocket. Word yeah, because they gonna bring it, so you gotta Word bring up. that shit. Right. Yeah. Word up. She's and a she, perfect example of of because she was on a show for what eight years or nine years. She was on Madam Secretary. Mm -hmm. She won a Tony. Yeah. And still people were like, and then all of a sudden she played this rock kind of, yeah. and everyone's like, rock, rock, yeah, rock. It's like so crazy. Like she's been on a show, has Tony's like. She's one. been doing it for a minute. Yeah. Like her story is crazy. Yeah. 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 She came on here. She was on it. Remember she, she, she was, she did eight or nine years of that show, was unemployed for like 10 minutes. The show had just ended. And then she got the, <laughs> yeah, she literally got the call for Kanan. Literally. literally yes, yeah. bro, as soon as that shit. Really? Like, yeah, as soon as the finale, the finale ended, literally 20 minutes she got a call. Hey. Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Yes, oh, she hey, said, hey, so uh, yeah, remember the opportunity you just lost? Well, here's the opportunity yeah. of your lifetime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. literally, bro. It's later. gonna change your life. She yeah. said, yeah. I was unemployed for 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> she got yeah. right back to it. That's yeah. amazing. Nah, that's different. Shout out to Patina. Now nah, she's a different machine. Man. Yeah, now nah, she's, she's she's a different breed. She she, she was doing the, the next the play. She's doing the Broadway play while filming. Like, yep. Yeah. Well, did you go see her do um uh in the woods? I didn't catch it. It was fire. I saw it twice. I was fire. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get to catch it, man. I, was, I pulled up. I, I was so I, upset. I couldn't catch it. That shit was fire. Yeah. Cause to see her as rock and then see her to you know transform into like rock. range. Yes, yeah. bro. Totally. Range. That's what you call range. I'm like range. she's singing, dancing, all yeah. type. Of Whole like, fucking different character. She just yeah. tapped into different. Yeah, different. What was your What was your favorite character from the original Power? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I I gotta say I gotta say my man Ghost. Yeah. Mm. You know, like, I just always appreciated, like, you know, he was fuck up a lot. Yeah, <laughs> he would be yeah, doing buddy. bullshit. <laughs> yeah. But I did appreciate, like, his mastermind quality. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, like, I think there's a lot that you could learn from watching Ghost. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just on, like, how to keep your shit running, you feel me? Stay on top of your business. And, you know, he he, he was just, like, a real, like, man's to man. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I've always appreciated his character. Right. So that's your favorite yeah. character, but, like, who do you think you would you would enjoy the most, like, playing? Like, who, what character would you play in, in Power? Uh, or like any the, of the... the I, I could see you as a good Kane, Oh, yeah, too. or in Ghost, too, yeah. yeah. Any, any, any... Yeah, show. I feel like Kane and Unique are, like, some type of... Uh, not parallels, but, like, a different dimensions type right. shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've always felt like that. Um, hmm... I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't know, man. I like unique, man. Yeah, I'm yeah, good. yeah. Like, I'm good where I'm at. I'm good where I'm at. I'm good where I'm at. Fuck that. Yeah, I'm like, having fun with this shit. Yeah, I'm, yeah. like, I'm having fun with this yeah. shit. So you're obviously, you know, doing music. Like you're still doing music and the show at the same time. Like, what are, what are your goals this year with music, and what are your goals this year with acting? Like, That's a great question. Um, this year, man. I'm focused on delivering another body of work, you know. Um, just musically, I've been shifting myself into a place of being more consistent. Right. Because historically, I've been one of those rappers where it's like I could take two to three years off and then come back and do an album. Such now, a blessing, though. No, it Not is. Not a lot of niggas could do that. It, it, it's a fact, you know, and I feel like that's worked for me this far, but now I just kind of want to, like, shift my method a little bit and, and, and take the consistency approach because, you know, in between my the last album I dropped and the one before that was a five year gap. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I created a lot of music in that time. So now it's it's time to open the floodgates, mm -hmm. if you will. You know what I'm saying? Oh. So definitely, you know, fans could expect some type of body of work for me this year for sure. And then, you know, on the T V and film side, you know, focused on this cane in life and just elevating and waiting for the right opportunities you right know thing. what i'm saying like uh with this with this thing i i really want to be delicate and take my time and make sure that i'm 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 picking the right roles you know what i'm saying and making sure i'm ready for the 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 roles that come my way you feel me so you do any like writing and shit like you do like next year Mm. So I, I got that on my agenda. I'm like, this year I'm gonna focus on getting right. this new project out. You know what I'm saying? Put some numbers on the board on the music, Canaan bag, and then next year I really want to tap into writing my own shit because yeah. I feel like there's a lot of um, there's a lot of opportunity and and a lot of uh, open lanes for certain types of content that's not being produced right for now. For sure. Yeah. Like you know, if you think about the '90s, how 
how so much black content was was coming out. Yeah. You know what I'm this saying? Funny shit. Right. And funny shit. you know, that's why I'm grateful for power. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, or or, or or the top boys, or the insecures, so or the grown cool. issues and stuff. But I still feel like there is a there's a lane or or a certain pocket that's not being covered. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying when it comes to the black space. Yeah, it's a void and, to and, feel for sure. And yes, yeah, so I definitely want to write a few projects with that in mind. You know what I mean. What's your process when you get to set? Are you, are you, are you, do you do anything specific? Like me, me and him are as loose as possible. We show up, we're playing music, we're fucking around, but there's other people, you know, I'm on ghosts that show up and they're serious, they're locked in. Like, yeah. wh- which side do you feel like? Oh, you... yeah, no, I'm definitely on the more loose side. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm what are we doing? Yeah, like, yeah, right, I'm, I'm chilling. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. First of all, I done, I'm smoking on my way there. You know, I be, I be landing on set. They oh they slide open that van door and just be mad smoke coming <laughs> out like, that oh, bitch. Come on in, Joey. Yeah. <laughs> you know anything for breakfast? Yeah, <laughs> like, so Adam worked over there, man. Hey, Adam, Adam, Adam opened the Shout door. Shout out my boy Adam, man. Oh, no. And then, you know, then I go hot box my trailer. <laughs> you feel me? But what I will say, as soon as I get to my trailer, I put my clothes on. Right. Mm-hmm. So you just ready to go. I just like, yeah, I just like you to be ready. Be right. You know what I mean? Yeah, because... I don't, yeah, I just be ready. I put my clothes on, do hair and makeup, then I come back. I might take a nap or Jones on the phone or read a book, different things. You know what I'm saying? But I be more on the loosey goosey, yeah, chilling. chilling. That's I'm the chilling. Best. I'm That's cooling. The best. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's gonna take about three hours for them to start shooting yeah. anyway. Yeah. Exactly. By the time we start shooting, I'm dead sober. <laughs> yeah, now you gotta roll up again. <laughs> I didn't went on. You feel yeah, me? Like, right, roll up again. Like. Yeah. When I get back, roll up again. Like mm-hmm. matter of fact, I say I got a method, bro. Yeah. I saved that clip. Mm-hmm. You know but what I'm saying? Scene, I go so when halfway. You're done with the scene, when I'm done, back, boom, yeah. reward. Yeah, you smart. <laughs> you go. Then they go lunch break. You got the you got the little forty minutes during lunch. Yeah. You got Not before lunch break. I won't even. Smoke, cause I'll come back after mm-hmm. lunch break, clap, <laughs> and nah, then I can't, I can't even match the energy that of whatever I was doing. Even if you don't that. smoke, I'll be eating and I come back. I'm like, Get damn, the itis. Like, <laughs> I'm like, damn, bro, like. Yeah. We took this long to come back. I don't even know. I'm not even in the scene no more. Yeah. She's about to take like two, three more takes for me to get back in the pocket. Yeah, so I'll be like, yo, y'all got to play the last take for me. Before yeah, let me see where we was at. Yeah, I, I just got to see what my energy was. I never even thought of that. I ain't going to lie. That. That, that's, a, that's, that, that's a smart method right there. Yeah, yeah, ask for that last take. Yeah, wow. Because yeah, yeah. 40 minutes, bro, 40 minutes... In between You'd the be take a different crazy. person. Yeah, like first like, of all, the version of you that was just filming was hungry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you, you come back, right. you satisfied. Yeah, right. you got the eye of the shit. You know the Snickers commercial. You are not who you are. <laughs> when you're hungry. Hungry. You're hungry. Now it's like I'm chilling. Now I'm happy. I, I, I ate. Now it's different. I'm not even supposed to be tight. How I'm supposed to be mad in right, the scene right. now. Exactly. You all relaxed and shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's your favorite scene you shot on Kanan? Did it happen in in the new season or it happened previous? Ooh. I think uh scene that comes to my head immediately is I think episode eight, season one, when like after they shot up Unique Car when he was with his son mm-hmm. and then the scene where he was rallying up the troops and he's standing on top oh, yeah. of the desk yeah, yeah, like he was on BT. I'm everybody fucking dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fucking dead. <laughs> nah, he was on top of it. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nah, cause I remember going to a place that day. That I've never been, you right. know what I'm saying? Like just where I was in my head, just the intensity that I had to channel to deliver that scene. Like I was like, "This what Denzel feel like?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you mean yeah. there? Yeah. Like I'm like, I went to that same place mm, right. and took s- some of that energy mm, right. yeah. and brought it back down. I'm like, "Fucking dead." Yeah, yeah. Nah, you was <laughs> in, you was in a pocket for sure. That yeah. shit. That I, shit was... I truly feel like we. Everyone can do that as actors, but the Denzels and that they can just access it quicker and faster right. and, and right they after lunch and whatever. Like right, right. So so me it take me a little yeah. second. It might take me a little second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like it gotta be intentional. Like I gotta yeah. fucking fake do a meditation before. Yeah, right. so, I gotta take right. me a little five minutes of myself, like yeah, just yeah. close the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Like in between scenes when I was shooting that. I wouldn't let nobody talk to me. Yeah. In between scenes. Some of them. Because yeah. I did not want to come out in the energy. Like right. I wouldn't let nobody talk to me. Right. Just tell me when we run it again. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Don't say nothing to me. I don't want I don't want any notes. dialogue outside of this. No, no, I'll listen to notes, mm-hmm. but I won't speak you won't back. Respond, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like okay, like, yeah. I'll yeah. look I'll be looking at the director. Like, 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yo, that's that Amino. Like, when I be in the party, yeah. they be talking like, yo, I just think you, you know what I mean? That was last night. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yo, like, that's, yeah. yeah. Last night, I'm like, I'm like yeah, right, yeah. Right, right, yeah. Let's get it. Let's roll. Yeah. And I just be like this. Let's roll, let's roll, let's roll. Yeah. I'll be yeah, ready, let's go, bro. Let's go. <laughs> I'll be ready, bro. Nah, that's a fact. How, how's Sasha? You like, he, Sasha did the podcast too, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he did? Yeah. yeah we Sasha time, came yeah. on before season one. Um, he, He's like a fucking genius, bro. Man, Sasha's the best. You know, his last name is Penn for a reason. Right. Because that pen is crazy. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, now shout out to shout out to Mr. Penn. Like he's he's been my guy on this whole Canaan journey. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like he's my guy. He's been like the North Star for me and and on, on just this whole project. You feel me? So I really appreciate Sasha and what he's done for me, the position he's put me in and all of that. Yeah. Man, shout out important. to Mr. Penn. Yeah. It's important, man. I had that person you could just talk to, yo. Yeah. How I feel about this. Yeah, how I feel man. about this. Like you need that. You need uh, that. Hell yeah. Listen, man, I know how it gets for the ones that, you know, that own those e-commerce businesses. You know, you got to ship stuff out. You got to create shipping labels. You got to do a lot. I know it's a lot, but don't worry. We got friends. Ship station. Listen, we're in the middle of, you know, we just dropped a little new merch right now. So you know what we've been doing? Using ShipStation. We've been using ShipStation, and it's been making our lives so much easier. Thank God for that one easy-to-use dashboard. I'm telling you, that shit is like magic. A lifesaver. Look, it's a free trial, a quick setup, so honestly, now's the time to use ShipStation if you've been on the fence about anything. ShipStation is easily integrated with Amazon, Shopify, Etsy, eBay, and more. Man, it's every single order you have with one simple-to-use dashboard. Printing shipping labels. Easily comparable rates. Delivery times to optimize every single shipment. And automate delivery notifications. And the best part is, with ShipStation, you'll never, ever, ever have to worry about overpaying for shipping, which is the absolute worst. ShipStation lets you save 84% on UPS and USPS shipping rates. 84%. That's That's like, that's like free. That's literally It's basically free. free. Yeah. We're giving it away at this UPS point. is paying you to ship their product. And listen, if that's not enough, the boys got you covered. You can use our promo code, the crew, to get two months free. Like, two months free. That's two months free. Spend more time growing your business. When you automate shipping tasks with ShipStation. Make sure you use the promo code crew at ShipStation.com for two months free. Two months free, man. Come on, two months? That's a lot of money to be made. Well, listen, now that you're saving money on shipping... You can tune back into the episode. You can ship your ass back to the crew has it. <laughs> All right, before we get you out of here, I want one musical artist and I want one actor that you're manifesting that you want to work with. Hmm. Music. Mm. I want to work with Summer Walker. I feel like me and her would make some real fire shit. I like that. I like that. That's, that would be a yeah. tough track. Yeah, I feel like me and her would make some some heat. Um, and then actor. I want to work with. Um, I'm blanking on my man's name. What's he from? UK. Uh, Daniel. Damson, Damson, no, not Damson, Daniel. Oh, Daniel Kaluuya? Oh, yeah, Daniel Kaluuya. Yeah, 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 fire, I love yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. elite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, his role in um, Judas in the Black Messiah, like, when I saw that. Like, at first of all, I was mad I was in that movie. You ever see movies or shows and you be like, mad that you're not in no, there? No, it's like, even worse when you audition for it and you're like, fuck, fuck they give it yeah, to this yeah, guy? Yeah, fuck, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's supposed to be Bro, my role, yeah, goddammit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or sometimes when you don't even get the audition, you're like... I was I'm, I'm, I was busy, right? Like, I couldn't get the yo, audition. I would hit my mm-hmm. agent up yeah. like, what, yo, where what was yeah. I for this? What was your intent yeah. yeah. when motherfuckers was looking for a role? The breakdowns, Joey Badass type. You're like, I'm Joey Badass. <laughs> yeah. oh, what the fuck yeah. you ain't got yeah. for me for this oh, shit? Yeah. Yeah. Be yeah. like that, man. But. I heard something like that about um, light skin Keisha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. they had that in literally the description, that, bro. Right? Look, listen, I was having I, have, I was having a conversation with Courtney, and um. Uh, she was telling me about you know like the characters and ghosts and shit, and she's like, yeah, I'm I'm writing a character that's like based off a of light skin Keisha, like she's just funny, like loud, whatever, blah blah. I'm like, I know her, like what right. are we doing? Like right. you got to cast her. She's right. like, she's like, yeah, we're gonna try, you know, but this character is basically light skin Keisha. I'm like, I right, bet. Well, let's get light skin Keisha. Yeah, and then, and then literally <laughs> like Keisha fast forward. Light skin Keisha entered the chat. <laughs> yeah, she literally entered the chat, bro. Fast forward, I'm at the, I'm at, we go to the table read, and I'm looking around, seeing me and everybody saying what's up to everybody, and I see Keisha, I'm like. 
oh shit, she made it in this bitch. I'm yeah. like, it's lit. Yeah. I was hyped to see it because like I knew Keisha for a minute. I met Keisha in like what 2016. I was in the I was in the studio in Atlanta, and like I was making some music with my boy um Torian. I was just I, I was producing heavy at the time, and she just pulled up. And I was like, oh shit. Keish, what up? And then after that, that's been my homie. And then right. now we working together. I'm like, that shit, yeah. That shit have you come across Matt at all or now? Matt? Yeah. Have you in, seen- in like real life, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not since, I don't think since the the, the power shit, though. Mm-hmm. But he's killing it. Wow. Yeah. 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 Davis yeah. McLean is one hell of a character. Yeah. 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 Like, I be forgetting that's Method, man. Yeah, yeah right. Bro, <laughs> like, I I just, he's a crooked lawyer to me. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, he's a quicker motherfucker. He play you, that shit well too. Yeah. He plays it so fucking well. Are you are you Proctor or are you uh, team Team Davis? Oh, definitely Davis. Yeah, yeah. that's been a big debate yeah, on this yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Proctor or Davis. Davis. It's yeah. tough to pick, but I'm a, I will go with Davis too because like Davis. He's just a real nigga. I man. mean, you Merc Proctor. I so. did, yeah, 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 yeah. But that was for Uncle, you feel me? Uncle, you know, I had to have Uncle's back, you feel me? I had to open the door. Nah, that's a fact. Yeah, yeah it had to. I, I ain't see it going down no other way. Yeah, I had to, have had to go. Back. Yeah, Proctor, <laughs> yeah, he was getting too close. He was a good to, yeah. dude, though. He was getting too but, close to, to being a liability. Yeah, he, he had to too go. close to being a liability. He had to go. But yeah, I'm a, I'll definitely go with Davis because one, my son Davis is a real nigga. Yeah, and he know how to spend his money. My boy yeah. had the lamb truck. Yeah, the like, lamb that nigga truck. was ready to boom sacks himself. Yeah, yeah. he was <laughs> on that. Like, he was <laughs> on that. He was. Proctor ain't had that. Energy. Yeah, nah, Proctor was. Davis, I'm gonna boom this nigga yeah, myself. Proctor, Proctor wasn't booming nobody. I think nobody. you calmed him down. Yeah, I'm like, right? yo, chill. I'm like, yo, bro, like you a lawyer, nigga, relax. Like you got to recall. Yeah, like you got the the most craziest murder nigga in the show. Tell you relax. That shit you was funny. How'd you feel about Sax dying? Were you? I ain't gonna. I was a little sentimental because he <laughs> yeah. he wanted an OG character. Yeah, yeah, man. You know what I mean? Like he he stuck around way longer than I think anybody anticipated. He was there since day one, bro. right? But to see him finally go was like. Wow! Yeah, they really finally got this. It's the end of an era. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean. It's crazy. It's tough to see the OGs go, yeah. man. Yeah, that shit bro. We'll keep doing your thing. Thank you for pulling up on us. So I want you to promote you, your music, what you got coming out, the stuff you know that you're writing, all that stuff right now. Um, obviously, you know we're banking episodes right now, so this could probably come out in a couple of weeks. We don't know where the strike will be at that time. Um, we're not promoting any shows. Um, we're promoting artists. We're promoting you know who these people are and what they and, come from, how they started, right? The right. Origin stories, all of that, right? And so it wouldn't be fair to so stop that. Um, uh, because we're not promoting any shows. We're promoting, you know, the artists themselves and the actors themselves. So I want you to plug everything you got going on right now. Yeah. Um, and Instagram, all that. Well, there ain't really much going on right now because, you know, I'm working on the project, but I don't know the title for it yet. Right. So I can't, like, really, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Be yeah. like, blah, 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 coming soon. Yeah. You know, but, I mean, I could say new music coming soon. Shit and coming, shit like that. right. Yeah, so we'll yeah. for sure have you back. You know, when the shows start coming out and stuff like that, we'd love to have you come back on. And for sure. What you got. But yeah, we sure. just wanted to chop it up with I you, bro. There's, there's a moment on this next joint yeah. where we're going to have to definitely come back after oh, yeah. that moment. Yeah, 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 please, yeah, please, yeah, yeah, yeah. please, we're to, please. We're going to have to come back. Listen, man, um, Where's 22 on Instagram, um, Where's 22 on YouTube, go catch the vlogs. Boys just being consistent. Y'all still being consistent, so I'm proud of him. You feel me? We have it. Every, every Sunday, we dropping every Sunday, so... Shout out to y'all on that. Um, y'all know Ming. Yeah, y'all know <laughs> Ming, you heard? Y'all know Ming. Yeah, yeah man. Cool has it, baby. Yeah. Oh, wait, you got to do this yeah. shit. Gianni V. Paolo, Instagram, TikTok, um, Threads now. Oh, yeah, Threads going crazy. <laughs> I forgot about Threads. Threads. Threads going crazy. I forgot about Threads, yeah. man. Um, I, ain't, I ain't accept the cookies yet because I don't know. I don't, don't trust Mark they, Zuckerberg. Yeah, yeah, you don't know what they doing with them. Yeah, it's like, the Obama's you know, still watching. Now, all of a sudden, there's a whole new terms and con- conditions <laughs> yeah. to fucking agree to. I'm like, I don't know. I'm, Did you see that Black Mirror yet? You yes. watch Black Mirror? Yes, this, this new shit? season? Yeah, the new season, new you accept the terms and conditions and crazy shit happens. Exactly. That, yeah. And I ain't gonna lie, I think that's what did it for me. I'm like, nah, you know I what? I ain't, I ain't not in this new metaverse. I'm yeah. not fucking accepting that yeah. shit. I went to Apple the other day, get a new yeah. phone, and it came up, and I thought about the Black Mirror episode. Yeah. I was like, because usually I just click that shit in two seconds. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Like, and now I'm like, I don't even know what I'm reading. I need to fucking accept. Yeah, I gotta watch that Black Mirror shit. I ain't catching it. Oh, yeah, Black Mirror so hard. I watched the first. And then they came out with the Bandersnatch, like the little selection shit. But I wasn't really jacking like, that compared yeah, to I the ain't first like one. The Bandersnatch. So I'm I'm hoping this this one that just came out is kind of a little more like similar to the yeah. first the first season. No, That's, it is. It is. That's the good thing about Black Mirror, you can yeah. hop around. Yeah, I'm tuning in. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna have to tune in tonight because that shit had me hooked. But I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. When I finished the season, I'm like, damn, it's no more. Yeah. It's yeah. tough. All right, uh, vlogs, YouTube, all that stuff. Uh, make sure you get new merch. 
Oh yeah, cool has it, man. Crew, crew me, has it, new merch. Let me plug my shit real quick. Yeah, do it. It's Joey Badass at Joey Badass on everything. New music coming real soon. Mm-hmm. Hell close. yes. Thank yeah. you so much for pulling up, Joey. You're appreciate it. In the Mike, give us one. The crew on. fucking has it, baby. The crew has it, and you have it. Thank you so much for pulling up, Joey. Come on, you know Woo! that. My team. Bad man. Thank you so much, brother. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Great talk.